here we go. 30 questions for my 30th birthday. Let's go. How do you get private time with your husband? I have three kids and find it very hard. Well, not to be CMI, but it's necessary. So. <laughs> feeling I would say a little wild because I have on my Instagram asked you guys to ask me any 30 questions in honor of my 30th birthday this week I have no idea what the questions are but I can only imagine that they are most likely pretty crazy I don't know that I'll ever do this again. <laughs> this is probably a one-time deal. Um, but you guys have asked me, I'm sure hundreds of questions, but just so that I was not reading the questions and filtering through them, I have a friend over today. She is going through all of your questions and she is going to be like screenshotting and asking me these questions to share with you guys. So, I have no idea what is about to happen. I'm a bit nervous, <laughs> but I'm prepared. So she's gonna be asking me if you hear a voice in the background, that's who it is. My friend Kenley's over. She's gonna be asking me the questions and I'm gonna answer them. Although I did say I have the right to refuse any questions that I'm not sure about because I have no idea what you guys are gonna ask me. So, I got a coffee. I'm ready. The two younger kids are in bed sleeping. So hopefully that means like it's silent, but if not, it's probably the other three kids who are downstairs chatting. All right, that's it. Here we go. 30 questions for my 30th birthday. Let's go. I'm nervous. It's okay, it's okay, we're good. Okay, <laughs> first question. Favorite and least favorite thing about filming the TV show? Oh, that's actually really difficult. Okay. I'll be like vague. My favorite thing was probably the ability to do things that we ordinarily would not have gotten to do. Like, for example, when John and I were first married, obviously like being a young family, life was very expensive. So we were actually able to fly to visit my family quite frequently. And the show, because my family had the show, it actually paid for our travel. So that was like a really nice perk. We wouldn't have been able to visit them so much had we not had that. So that was probably like a favorite thing is being able to like do extra things we couldn't have done on our own. Least favorite. Um, I would say the least favorite was people having an opinion, an idea of who I am and who we are without actually getting to know us because obviously a show they film like hours and hours and hours and days of footage and that is cut down to like 20 minutes into a show and so sometimes I feel like what we were or the circumstance that was surrounding a situation that was filmed was not always accurately portrayed so I feel like people have an idea of what I was without actually knowing who I was and that I feel like it was hard to beat because it's like been, you know, kind of a lifetime of being like, I'm not really like that, but everyone doesn't believe me. So that was probably my least favorite. Like not getting a fair shakedown. Does that sound like, <laughs> does that sound too much? <laughs> I think that was a good answer. <laughs> I'm like, I don't know. It's like. <laughs> okay, ready? Next question, on what occasion did you wear pants for the first time and what kind were they? <laughs> <laughs> Do I wanna answer this? Okay, the first time I wore pants was actually on my honeymoon. Um, and I did not know like types of jeans back then and so I got like one pair at Goodwill. And one pair I got was like, someone left a pair at my house that had gotten like ripped from them horse riding. <laughs> And I sewed it, hand sewed it back up. And that was my other pair. So I had two pair that I took on my honeymoon. Nice. I have no idea what kind they were. They were probably like boot cut maybe or like straight leg. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Did you think when you were first married that you would have a large family? 
Yes. Um, John and I both always, like, we both came from big families. He comes from a family of six. We always knew that, knew that we wanted a lot of children. We just never knew, like, what the number was. Before I had children, people remind me of this often. Before I had children and before I got married, I was like, oh, 10 kids, I could do 10 kids. And I started having kids and I was like, what was I thinking? No, I cannot do 10 kids. So, yeah, we always wanted a big family. We just didn't know, like, how big that would be. What advice would you give to your 20 year old self? <laughs> a bunch of people ask that. Okay, my number one advice for if I was given advice to my 20 year old self was do not care what people think because I feel like people have an opinion that is often an opinion based on their life circumstance, but it's not always what your life circumstance will be and I think a lot of people sometimes give bad advice based on their circumstances and the things that they disliked and did um, so if I would say to myself it would just be at that age like you have to know what you believe you have to stand by it and you have to be willing to sometimes stand alone and to be like this is what I'm gonna do because I know that this is what works for my family and not care what everyone else's opinions are even if it's contrary to like popular opinion. Okay, are you finished having children? Yes. <laughs> I'm <laughs> pretty <answer>. sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. Although, like a month ago, I might have gone on a date with John and had a conversation and said, what would you think about us having one more? And he was like, what? <laughs> and then he goes, yeah, if that's what you want. And I was like, I don't know. Like, I don't, but no. Like the next day we went out to eat with all of our children and I looked at him and said, I don't know what I was thinking yesterday when I brought this up with you. Like, no. It was like, no, <laughs> we're done. Okay, what's your favorite thing about being a stay at home mom and wife? The satisfaction you get in giving your life for someone else because I think being a stay-at-home mom and being like a homemaker is it's like you have to be a selfless person because it takes like a lot of you to give of your everyday like life and will to someone else who most of the time doesn't appreciate it so I think like just seeing all of the work and the sweat and the tears <laughs> and sometimes blood that you pour into this like showing itself and being like, oh my goodness, all that time that I just like poured into this, it actually paid off. And like seeing the result of that is like very satisfying. What's the one thing in your life, past or present, you want your kids to know about you? Sorry, that was deep. <laughs> like a, like a, like if I like passed, what they would remember? Sure, like a legacy. Okay. Um that I love people and that I was someone who loved my family and invested in their life, but more than that, that I was someone who like feared and honored God and was a godly woman and wife. Will you ever move back to Tennessee? <laughs> I'm gonna say, I can't say never, because when you say never, then it's like, it always ends up happening, but as of right now, no. Although I do love the weather of Tennessee. And you know, Tennessee will always have a place in my heart, but no, I don't think so. If you worked outside of your home, what would you wanna do? <laughs> this depends on the day. Literally, like I feel like every day it's like, one day you're like, oh, I would be a lawyer. And then the next day it's like, oh, I'd be a nurse. And then the next day you're like, you know, forget that. Like, I would run for politics. And the next day, you know, something different. So I don't know, I have no idea. I would love to do something, like especially when my kids get older and move out, something that like helps people. Like a job that you can invest in other people. So whether that be with kids or with like young people or adults or like elderly, I don't know. I would love to do something like that, like and give back. Okay, would you ever cut your hair to your shoulder? I did this <laughs> one time. I cut my hair to my shoulders after I had Allie, my first. And it was glorious because it was so easy to get ready. Like, so easy. I cut my hair, like, it barely touched my shoulders. But 
I hate how my face looks with <laughs> short hair. I have such a like a round face. So I don't know that it suits my face shape well. Okay, the current sibling you're closest with. This was like a hundred questions. You know that if I answer this, everyone's gonna be like, you know, like every all my family's gonna watch this and they're gonna be like, what, her? You're close to them? So I'll name like if I was to say if I went through my phone, the, the people that I call the most on like a regular basis, I would say would be my sisters Adelie and Ellie. Like I probably communicate with them the most because like they're younger and life's always changing, and I don't see them as often right now. And so I think that it takes a lot to keep up, you know, and see what's happening in their life. Life changes so fast for them. So I would say I talk to them like the most. And also they didn't specify, so you could say like geographically you are closest to Oh yeah, Jackson. true. Right? <laughs> closest I live to. Oh yeah, Jackson, he lives here. <laughs> okay. How do you get private time with your husband? I have three kids and find it very hard. Well, not to be CMI, but it's necessary. So you just have to plan better. Um, I would say that the most quality time that we get with each other is this one we're such a stickler to like we love a schedule we love having the kids have a bedtime because it's the only time that we get to spend together just like whatever it might be like going out on a date or just like watching TV or really spending time together you know <laughs> um, I think that like having your kids have a routine where that's able for me my kids go to bed at 730 like the two younger ones, the rest of them go in their room at 7.30 and they get like reading time and they have reading lights and they're able to stay up and read until like 8.30, sometimes 9. So that's kind of a time where we're like, oh yay, everyone's like in bed, everyone's like where they're supposed to be. And then, you know, we have until the evening. We're late night owls, so we stay up pretty late. So it gives us like a few hours at least of an interrupted time that we can like talk or hang out or whatever. So just... I guess try and plan date nights. If you can't make that happen, try and plan date nights like on a regular basis. What do you hope for your family in the next 10 years? Um, um, I would love to see us living somewhere that has like more property and that like is more Kid friendly to be able to like go outside and play and interact and maybe like have a garden and I don't know more like low-key way of living and less screens so I would say that, that would be like my top priority if I said what I wanted in 10 years will you allow your kids to go to secular college and obtain degrees I, I really have no idea uh, people ask me the same thing about school often they're like would you ever do something different I really don't know. I think that it's just like a case by case basis. Like if the kids wanted to go to college, 100% like we would not care. Um, I think it's more of the mindset of if you're going to go to school, just like know what you want to do so that you're not just going to school and then you don't know and you, know, you do this and you do that and then you can decide you don't like to do school. Like if you want to do college, like totally like do it, but just have an idea and like research and look into what you think that you want to do so that you have a better structure going into it. All right, what are your pet peeves? Name your top three. Mm, like for John sure. or just in general? <laughs> they didn't specify. Okay, just in general. Um, I hate lying. <laughs> I know that's like crazy, but like that like pet peeve is like high on my list. It drives me crazy. Like. Even if it's simple things, it's like we waited five hours in line and you're I'm like, no, you waited one hour in line. Like, it just bothers me. That and like living messy, but like within reason. Obviously when you have kids, like the house is messy. But like, I mean like dirty messy. Like the bathrooms aren't clean. The dishes are just constantly overflowing. Don't look at my sink right now. I mean like long term. <laughs> I don't know, those two, what's my third? whining the kids know this like whining from the children when they're just whining for no reason you know like they're not actually crying they're not hurt they don't need anything they're just whining 
I always say, what does mom hate? And they say, whining. I was like, it's true. Mm -hmm. That's my top three. Okay, did you go to college or the secondary school? I did actually. I dual enrolled when I was, I wanna say I took my first class when I was 16. And then I only took a class that semester, like one. I think I did like history. And then the next semester I did, again, like just one class. So it was kind of nice that I was just doing one because I wasn't taking a full load now. So it was like still in school, like high school. Um, and then I want to say the most I ever did was like three classes at a time. But then I, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And so I didn't really stick with it because that particular college that I was going to didn't have any degrees that I really were was interested in. So like when John came along, I was still in college, but then I was like, I don't really want to do this. So I got married instead. <laughs> what would you say is your biggest insecurity? If I was to say today, like right now, it would be like my weight. I just like, I, I don't have as much of a problem comparing to other people. It's more like a comparison to myself, like what I used to be. And like ever since like having Rhett, I like have struggled with the weight that I want to lose and like how I look. So that would be like my biggest like currently. Do you really get along with all of your siblings? <laughs> No, but I will explain. Realistically, I know that it's a foreign concept to most people because I have a ridiculous amount of siblings. I have 18 siblings, there's 19 children total. So realistically, if anyone else has, I mean even like six or seven siblings, you understand like different personalities. Even in friendships, there are personalities that like just click better and you get along with different people better. Um, so I think within that saying, there are 19 people, those people have remarried, there are just some personalities that don't necessarily mesh well together, or there's certain personalities that just are, they're just naturally not best friends, it's just how it is. So, no, I'm not close to every single person, but like, I am friends and like cordial to every single person, if that makes sense. I know this sounds like complicated, but... Do you think you might design clothes or jewelry for Cheerfully You? I would really love to, but I don't know right now. I'm kind of like taking a very slow route because it's expensive for one, and for two, it was kind of like a side thing because John still works, I'm homeschooling the kids, I'm home with the kids all the time, they're still young, so this is very much like a side deal that's like a little bit at a time, so I don't know. I'm looking into other options and like seeing what I can do, but I'm not positive yet. Have you kissed anyone else other than John? <laughs> That's an easy one, no I haven't. <laughs> okay, what is the one major thing that changed the most about you from 20 to 30? Changed the most? It probably is not a good thing, but I feel like, like I just don't put up with much anymore. But, but that could have been pregnancy. Like with pregnancy, it was like, I was just, like don't even it's just whatever's happening it was like more more i was more vocal more like absolutely not we are not doing that um but, and i feel like that's kind of carried over the older i've gotten the more that i've been like you look back and you see like younger children you know 20s and doing life and you just think like oh honey believe me you'll learn that lesson just don't worry about it right now move on like Looking back, you're gonna think this is so small, but in the moment, it's so big. So I feel like I, <laughs> I'm a little too vocal <laughs> about my feelings. <laughs> All right, would you ever consider going to a different denomination other than Baptist? I don't know. I would say that I would go to any church that aligns with the beliefs of the Bible. If that's the case, I don't think the denomination necessarily matters. It matters what the Bible teaches, what the Bible like says, and if that church is portraying and teaching what is in the Bible. If that's the case, then I don't think that it would matter the denomination. How are you gonna do bedrooms once the threat is older? This is, this has actually been a question for a while. 
The rooms are very small and it's very tight right now. There are like three in a room and two in a room. So I don't know, there is an idea of potentially closing in like a room and making the girls' bedroom bigger, but then that means Rhett would have his own room and I'm just like, I don't know about that. But the girls' room would be like three times the size. So I don't know, maybe we'll move, get an extra room, and then we'll have like three rooms. I don't know, I really don't know. Are you going to be visiting Tennessee anytime soon? There are talks of plans in the next month, but nothing is nailed down yet. We have not booked travel for anything yet, but there are plans to potentially um, go back in December. Since you were in the public eye for so long, how do you deal with haters? <laughs> oh, I mean, I think that most, m my normal everyday would be like, just don't pay attention because you have to th grow thick skin, you have to be able to like just let it roll off your back. But I also think that there's a side, especially like being a female and being like more emotional, there's a side that's also like, I am a human being and like other people shouldn't just think that it's okay to just talk about people in the way that they do or just to like attack people in the way that they do. Especially when it's like, things like physically that they can't change or things that are outside of their control. Um, so I don't know, I mean overall, whenever I get in a situation where like I really like feel down because of the like negativity of people, I try to think, are they someone that's like close to me and a friend? Because if they are, then that like obviously holds more value because they know me personally. And is it something that is like constructive criticism that I can learn from and become better at? And like, are they pointing out a flaw that like I just don't see? Um, and then really just seeking advice from people who are in like that inner circle, people who see you every day, who have earned your respect and your trust. And like, I have had times where I've like called like one of my best friends and been like, hey, somebody said this. Like, do you think that that's true about me? Like. Is that accurate? And so like sometimes, I mean, most of the time she's been like, no, it's like far-fetched. But I mean, I'm sure there are those times that it's happened where it's been like, yeah, I mean, slightly, maybe, you know, you're too harsh on that or not on this. So I would say overall though, like don't let it get to you. This one is funny because I know the answer, <laughs> but when did you get your face mole removed? <laughs> this is one of the craziest stories. I am not even kidding. I had, I don't even remember which eye it was. It was on your right eye. I think it was this one. Yeah. Okay, I had out of nowhere, I'm talking like in my teenage years, like older teenage years, I had to have been like 16 or 17 and this like mole appeared like under my eye, okay? And it was like really dark and obvious. I hated it. I even so bad, like hated it so much when I was like <laughs> younger. I like tried to pull at it and pick it off and it was like bleed and I tried to like fingernail file it. It's so ridiculous though. <laughs> but it's a fingernail file too. Of course it bled and didn't go away. And I like hated it for forever and I got married. I wanted to get it removed before I got married because I just, I didn't want any of my photos. Anyway, didn't do anything about it. And then one day, I don't even know when, I did not even recognize like when it fell off, but it randomly fell off. Like after I had, I don't know, a kid or two, it just disappeared out of nowhere. So. Like you still have a little freckle from it, but it's not like Like it was so, yeah. it was so bizarre. Like it was like clearly like a mold, like mm -hmm. a protruding. It was really, I didn't like it. Do y'all do family vacations often? So John and I, and like our children, we've actually never done a family vacation. Um, I guess, so John counted a family vacation as like, oh, I went to see my family or I went to see my grandparents. I don't deem that a family vacation. I deem a family vacation like somewhere that you intentionally go like with just you and your children to like spend time together as a family, not necessarily to visit family. Um, so we have not actually ever done that. We have done a family vacation with John's family before. We have done a family vacation with my family before. Um, and we've done like, you know, a trip for like softball. It's like one night or things like that, but we've never actually done family vacation but we're hoping to as the girls like are getting older 
how hard or easy was it to truly go from 21 people to just you and John and being in another state? I mean, it was definitely like shell shock. <laughs> I feel like when I first got married, which is so crazy to think back to, but when I first got married, I did not know what to do with myself. So I like interviewed to get a job, um, like, and I did like a whole, like even at one job I was like getting, I did a whole day like working there like to evaluate me and I was like gonna get a job like in a daycare. Um, then I ended up getting pregnant, I was like super sick and they didn't, like they actually passed me over for that job anyway. But I didn't know what to do with myself and so I would like go and sit at Starbucks and like write letters, like thank you letters for my wedding or I would go shopping with my sister-in-law at like Goodwill and I'd go to lunch every day with John. I was like, what do I do? So like, I don't know, it was a, it was a big adjustment. Okay, the story behind yours and John's first kiss. <laughs> this is gonna be kind of awkward. Um, it was not like a planned kiss, okay? It was just one of those moments where like we were alone together and like he hugged me and like kissed me on the cheek and then I was like, why don't you just kiss me? <laughs> he did. <laughs> and so that just like happened. It wasn't like a plan, like we thought it out. I don't know, it was just one of those moments. We're in the moment. Okay, last one. What is your favorite age gap between your children? That's really hard to say. For me, on my end, like having the children, I would say two years was like durable. But with like seeing how they are like close knit together, like obviously Lexi and Zoe are extremely close, but they were like 15, 14 months apart, which is very, very, very close. Um, <laughs> so, I don't know, it's just, I feel like the more kids, I think it depends, the more kids you have, the more that it's like, mm, I don't know, like, cause Zoe, and Macy are three years apart, and I was like, it was a needful three years. But that's also because I had three kids already. So, I would say you just have to know what like works for your family in that moment. Mm -hmm. All right, that's it, 30 questions. Thank you for asking, and hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, if you did, I would love if you would leave me a comment below and let me know what you think. Bye.